Hey, uh, good morning. It's 10 o'clock, and uh, I'll get started a little slowly here just in case a couple people pop on. Um, my name is Phil Pitts. I'm the Northeast Regional Manager for Basic Coatings. I cover, you know, Boston, New York, New Jersey, down to Philly and Delaware. And we're on with Josh Frink, who covers the Southeast part of the United States. And this morning, we are going to uh, we're going to go through a video on basic hypertone stains then a short presentation and then some uh, some question and answer time. You ready to go, Josh? Ready to go, Phil. All right, I'm going to I'm going to share my screen and start the video. And you see my my video coming up. I am screen sharing. So. In this video, we are going to show you how to properly apply hypertone stains to achieve a professional looking floor. Hypertone stains utilizes water oil hybrid technology to deliver rich, deep colors. Low VOCs, low odor, and non combustibility mean a safer product for you and your customer. As with any product, but especially since this is an exciting new water oil hybrid technology, be sure to read and understand the technical data sheet and safety data sheets completely before using. Prior to beginning a project, test in an inconspicuous area. This will also allow you to become familiar with your complete application method and to ensure customer satisfaction. Follow industry standards and flooring manufacturers' recommendations for acclimation, design, layout, and application of wood flooring materials. Sand floors using accepted NWFA MFMA procedures. Applying hypertone stains is easiest when working with a two man team. Restrict airflow during application to help prevent premature drying. After final sanding, record moisture readings throughout the floor before water popping and or staining the floor. Taking moisture readings prior to application to provide a baseline for when to begin sealing and top coating. Make sure moisture is within acceptable levels for the project. Controlling sunlight, humidity, airflow, and temperature will all make your job easier during application. Plan your workflow by establishing the area you are going to stain. Do not stop until you are done. As with most hardwood flooring stains, water popping is recommended to open the grain and allow more uniform and richer color penetration. Thoroughly vacuum the floor prior to water popping. Water pop floor in uniform manner using a pump sprayer and then back roll with a paint roller or trim pad to ensure the floor is fully saturated. Since this product is a unique water-based formula, there is no need to wait for the floor to dry completely before beginning application of stain. However, do not apply to flooring that has standing water or puddles. Prior to applying stain, shake the container thoroughly as the stain may have settled over time. If more than one gallon is needed or a custom color formula is being used, mix enough stain to do the entire project to ensure uniform color. After shaking, pour from the original containers into a large container, like a paint tray or a bucket. In hot, dry conditions, or if you are just learning how to work with this product, we recommend using Stain Glide. Stain Glide will prolong the open time, allowing you to blend sections of the floor without the risk of lapping. It is also recommended to use stain glide if working with the more heavily pigmented colors, such as white, tobacco, slate, cabernet, deep red, yellow, or blue. You can use up to 18 ounces of stain glide per gallon of stain. Note that using stain glide will extend dry times. The more you use, the longer the dry time. After that, into the timing of your project. Applicators that we recommend are quality 3 8 inch microfiber rollers or paint pads. To use hypertone stains, apply a liberal amount of stain and uniformly cover the floor in 24 inch to 36 inch wide strips. Always apply stain with the grain. When cutting in the edges, always feather out the stain to blend into the field. It is important to cut in edges of the room as you go, instead of cutting in edges ahead of time ladder and lead the lap lines. Address all edges as you come into contact with them using a trim pad or brush. Proper application should yield a coverage rate of approximately 700 to 800 square feet per gallon. 
Once you've applied the stain, immediately begin to remove the stain from the floor. There is no need to wait around. Using two thick terry cloth rags, use one to remove excess stain, the other to blend the stain to a uniform appearance. When overlapping previous rows, thoroughly re-wet the edge. Wipe the blend in areas that overlap. Be sure to remove all excess stain off the floor or adhesion problems may occur. Pro tip, as the first rag becomes loaded up, discard it and make the blending rag your new excess stain rag. Grab a new rag for blending. A typical dry time is two to four hours under ideal conditions of 70 degrees Fahrenheit and 50% relative humidity. Heavily pigmented colors and product mixed with stain glide will have extended dry time. Although moisture readings may get to original baseline levels, it's recommended that initial coats of sealer or finish not be applied prior to 24 hours after application of stain. Temperature, humidity, and airflow will affect dry times. Lower temperatures, high humidity, or lack of airflow will extend dry times. There's no need to rush this drying step. Use only recommended and approved basic coating sealers over hypertone paints. Hypertone stains can be cleaned with soap and water. In most cases, the stain can be wiped off trim and walls with a damp rag when the stain is still fresh. Stain rags can be tossed in the trash with no worries of spontaneous combustion. Dispose of leftover stain material according to local regulations. Okay, Josh, I'm going to flip over to your PowerPoint presentation and let you go and just let me know when uh, you want me to go to the next slide. Sounds good, sir. Hypertone stains. It's an exciting product for us to talk about in our industry. I, uh, when I was putting this together, I was trying to think of a product that I've been more excited about and I had to go back to like pneumatic floor nailers <laughs> when we were finally able to add uh, air to our manual guns. Um, this is something that is hopefully going to change the industry. I mean, it, it has taken so many of our issues and problems uh, out of play. Um, so it's a privilege to be here with you guys this morning and talk about uh, this new product. We introduced this product about a year and a half ago. And we've seen some really amazing results with it. Um, it it's really cool to, to give a product like this to contractors and, and let them go out there and, and see uh, all the different things they can do with it. They're, they're only limited by their imagination with this product. You got that uh, PowerPoint up yet? Yeah, it's up. I'm still you seeing see it. No, I'm still seeing the video screen. Oh, okay. Well, let me go back and see. Yeah. This is the this is the part of it that uh, that we need to do better. I'll just keep talking about the product then, since we're trying to wrap this up in twenty minutes. Um, oil and Josh, water. What, what do you see on the screen? What do you see on the screen right now? I'm seeing you, and then I'm seeing the uh, basic video uh, that we were watching. It, it's kind of ended at at that. Yeah. I'm trying to reopen my meeting here.
keep go ahead, Josh. All right. Um, so basically, some benefits, and and you guys saw this um, on on the video there. It's a water oil hybrid. Um, so this allows us a, a lot of unique things that we can do with this. Um, and what's also unique about this is the pigment that we've put in here. Um, it, it's an, we get this pigment from, uh, from the automotive world. Uh, so it helps us maintain color fastness through the product. And what I mean by that is over time, this color isn't going to fade. It's not going to change. Uh, whereas you see that with a lot of other products, a lot of stains that are on the market. There we go. Sounds good. You hit me on the uh, next screen. Yeah. Awesome. Okay. Perfect. So what we're looking at there, 14 colors. Again, it's color fast. So over time, this is not going to fade out like you see with a lot of dyes and tints and, and even uh, other stains that are on the, on the market. So we have the 14 colors uh, for you to start with. But the nice thing about this is you can mix any of these. So you can come up with whatever color you want uh, for your homeowner or if you're out on a gym floor and, and they have a certain color in mind for their teams, it's completely unlimited uh, with, with what you can achieve uh, here. Very low odor, really can't even smell this stuff. Non-flammable, that is a huge one in our industry. You don't have to worry about these rags catching fire. Uh, you don't have to worry about putting them in a metal container. You can throw them away just like anything else. Um, it's fast drying. Again, two to four hours is what we say. Keep in mind though, if you do add um, uh, some stain glide to it, and I would recommend doing that, um, especially if you're just starting out with it, you know, getting to learn the product, or if you're using a really dark color, uh, add some stain glide to it. But also keep in mind on that dry time, uh, if you're putting some stain glide in that, that's giving you more work time, but then that's also going to slow down your drying. So um, usually the best thing, not, not necessarily just a moisture meter, there's other ways to check that. So your moisture meter would give you a surface reading, but get out a, a vacuum and just put that vacuum hose on the wood floor, especially like if there's cracks, crevices, put that vacuum on there, see if any pigments coming up. Um, that's one of the best tests out there for actually testing whether or not your stain is dry. Um, really nice cleanup. There is no better feeling than walking over to the sink when you're done staining a floor with water and washing all the stain off of your hands. It's, it is, uh, I see everybody smiling the first time that they clean up uh, after this product. And it gives you a very nice, even color. And it doesn't matter what wood you're working with. We've all experience stain in pine or stain in maple and the splotchiness. Uh, this eliminates all of that. And it's almost like you're just staining in oak, no matter what wood species uh, you're using. Uh, all right, let's go ahead and hit this next one. The, uh, some pro tips. There were a lot of pro tips uh, in that video. Recommend you uh, watching that again, if you, if you got any questions. Uh, but some of the ones I wanted to focus on, some of the bigger ones there is water popping. So normally our mentality when we're staying in a wood floor as a contractor is that we have to let that water popping dry. So that might be something we schedule for the last thing we do before we leave the job that evening. It's completely different with a water stain. That water that you're putting on the floor actually helps you. So if you're water popping the floor, adding that moisture to it actually gives you more time to work with the stain and the wood's not just sucking the moisture right out of your product. So what we recommend is water pop the floor, just use water, don't do like a water alcohol mix, just use water. And then as soon as you start to see it flash off the floor, where you're not seeing any puddles, it's, it's getting back to the color. And I'm talking like 15, 20 minutes, you know that look you get, you're ready to get on that floor and start staining. All right, so, so don't think that you have to wait like other stains. So water popping helps it. You're not gonna see a drastic color difference uh, when you water pop the floor. So don't expect that. Like with an oil-based stain, you'd get night and day difference on color. You don't see that with this product, but it does allow you more work time. Um, you want to get the stain on the floor as fast as you can. So that's why we say don't rag it on. That just takes too long to get it on. Uh, put it on a uh, T-bar, roller. Roller's my preferred method uh, for applying this stain. Get it on the floor. Um, and then it's okay to rag it off, but just get it on the floor faster. 
Uh, again, use the stain glide for your darker colors and allow you uh, some more work time. Don't go cut in the entire room, just cut in for your next pass. Uh, you don't, you don't want to get too far ahead of yourselves uh, with this, that would bite you. And it, it does matter what type of rag you use on this. Don't use like a t-shirt material. A terry cloth rag for this works best. If, if you're buffing, uh, don't use thin, dense stain pack. Uh, they just create too much heat because of, of how dense they are. Just use a regular white thick buffing pad. That, that's the best thing to use if you're trying to remove this with a buffer. Um, it also works as a great uh, additive. The latest uh, issue of the Wood Floor Business Magazine, I have it kind of referenced there. There's a two-page article on a uh, job we did on a screen and recoat uh, with Praters. Um, so you see in those pictures there the difference. We, we did just recoating the floor. We did not sand that floor down. All we did was screen it with 180. Then we used the stain at uh, 3% in our finish and got that drastic of a color difference on a screen and recoat. So the possibilities that this has opened up on sports floors as well as residential floors of going in and changing the color on an existing floor. I mean, it's, it's opened up so much more possibilities for us. All right, let's hit that next screen. So we had a, a privilege um, beginning of this month uh, to go into the White House. Uh, got to work with Universal Floors, uh, Sprig Lynn and Sean. They'd been using this product on several different projects uh, this summer. Uh, so feel free to reach out to them. I know Sprig's on, on a lot of social media. Uh, ask them what, what they liked about this product because he's used this to save several big profile projects this summer, uh, matching up uh, maples uh, to mahoganies. Uh, he had a, a white floor that just wasn't white enough, so he came back with our product, had, added some white to it, got the look they were after. But uh, here we are uh, at the White House. We did two rooms and a hallway, uh, Santos mahogany, and they wanted all that red taken out of the floor. Uh, so we made it a brown floor uh, with our stain. Uh, real privilege to work with these guys, Wayne Lee, Daniel Boone, uh, all of these guys. And I was actually the youngest one on that job, but it, it was an honor to, to work at the White House. And so we've got Hypertone Tobacco in two rooms of the White House and Street Shoe. All right, you guys ready for a big announcement? We have only had this product available in gallons, but we are currently manufacturing this in pints. And it's a clear bottle. Isn't that gonna look great? up on your shelf, uh, being able to see. And that's with our, all our products, having that clear bottle, you're seeing what you get when you make the purchase right there for us. Um, this is, we've been being asked for this in smaller sizes uh, since we launched it. You know, guys are wanting to make samples and they don't want to have to, the expense of buying a whole gallon for samples, or they're just wanting to use 2%, 3% of it in their finish as a color additive. This is gonna make this so much easier. So look for this on shelves soon. Uh, we, we should be rolling this out within the next um, couple weeks. All right, I know we're trying to get this done in, uh, in 20 minutes. We got one more screen here. I'm probably not gonna have a lot of time for Q&A. We'll, we'll try to catch a couple, uh, but please, uh, if you got any questions about this stain, uh, send me an email. Um, and if you're outside of my territory, I'll, I'll I'll forward you uh, to, to the rep that's handling your territory. Uh, but ask us a question, reach out to us. Uh, let's set up a, a demo time. And uh, it, again, it's jfrank at basiccoatings.com. Ask us a question about this and we'll send you a hat just for listening to our, our spiel this morning. All right, Phil, what you got, man? Uh, okay, so uh, just, just before we leave, uh, there's a couple questions that I hear a lot of times um, when I'm out either demoing hypertone stain or, you know, presenting it to people. And, and one common was common one is, Hey, I hate to get on my hands and knees. Can I buff this product on with a carpet pad? Um, I've tried it. I really don't like that. Um, in fact, I did 5,000 feet of stain uh, Wednesday. We stained an entire basketball gym provincial. 
we buffed it off. We never got on our hands. So we rolled it on and buffed it off. Um, but I don't like the uh, consistency of it to buff it on. Um, it, in fact, this, you know how you put it on a carpet pad right in the center, you put most stains right in the center and it would spread out. Ours doesn't have that viscosity and it doesn't spread. So don't buff it on, roll it on, buff it off. You still won't have to get on your hands and knees. Yeah, and, and, and roll it on like it's free. You know, roll it on uh, very liberally. Uh, don't try to, you know, to, don't try to get more than 800 feet a gallon per se. Don't try to get, squeeze a thousand feet out of a gallon. Um, uh, you know, roll it on nice and, nice and heavy and, and you'll have nice and even results. So um, another question I hear, uh, Josh, is um, uh, do I let it sit? Do I, you know, once I, once I apply it, do I, do I have to let it sit and soak in like an oil-based stain? Not at all. Get right on that. I mean, go wall to wall with your application, you know, two to three feet, jump right back on it and get it off. This is not something that, that you need to let set. It, it's going to get the color as soon as it hits the floor, just about. Uh, another question I hear, Josh, uh, very frequently is, listen, uh, this is water-based stain. How do I prevent lap lines? Okay, tell me how I prevent lap lines. I'm nervous about using it. I feel like I'm going to have lap lines. How do I prevent it? That's been a huge problem with water-based stains. I've, I've seen it. Other contractors seen it. This does not do that as bad as the, our previous generations of water-based stain. Um, the nice thing about this stain, and, and that applies to repairs too, is this stain will re-wet itself, but it's not re-wetted by uh, the, the top coats. So overlap yourself. Um, you know, don't try to run dry uh, on your lap line there, over wet, rub it in real good and, and you'll be fine. Yeah, I think, I think one way uh, I've heard Tim Nathan describe it, he said, you know, just work, you know, when you're ragging, when you're ragging it off, you know, work that lap line a little extra and it'll blend right in nicely and, and, and that's, that's what we see. So, uh, Josh, I know you had some other questions that you had, uh, you, you had emailed me uh, that we wanted to review, but I, I, why don't you, why don't you hit us with, with some of those and, and we'll do a question and answer with those too. I, I, I don't have the email available, so. Give me just a second. I'm changing screens here so I can see it. All right. All right. What, what do you get for coverage, Josh, on a gallon? So uh, seven to 800 feet on that. Um, oh, here was a good one about repairing that. Repairing stain has always been such a nightmare. It was funny, I, on this job this week, I, I showed those guys how to repair this stuff and they couldn't get enough of it. I mean, they were walking around looking for anything that they could repair because this, this repairing the stain is actually fun because it's so easy. So if you get a heavy spot, you know, go in there uh, with, with water and re-wet the stain and, and, and you're gonna change, you're gonna lighten up the color. Um, or, you know, if you need to go after an edger mark, scrape it out, get you some more stain. Uh, don't be afraid to get in there and try different things repairing it uh, because it is so easy to repair. Um, okay. We covered most of these other ones. Buffed on, rags won't come by. When, when do we expect the pints to be available? And can we, uh, can we begin to order pints now? I know we have a price list for it and we're manufacturing it. So <laughs> I think we are taking orders, but um, I, we're currently not shipping it, but it is very soon, like within a couple of weeks. Good, good, excellent. All right, I see there's a couple. Okay, so um, I have a couple of questions that, that came in and one was, do I need to seal it or, or can I go right straight to a finish like street shoe? Go ahead, Josh. Uh, I've done it both ways. Um, no issues, because I mean, we're even putting it in our finish. So, um, it, of course, you're going to save money putting a sealer down um, and get a, a better bond. Most guys are putting the sealer down, you know, just to, to save money. But if it's one of those things, you, you can go ahead and put a top coat right on it. But and it, I'd, I, add, uh, I'd add that, you know, if you're using white oak, 
Um, and you use lock and seal. We don't want to risk, you know, having tannin bleed and ruining your, your nice color. Okay. Um, another question that popped in, it said, uh, is there any demos local to Northwest Georgia or South Tennessee? And that's, uh, that would be your, your neck of the woods, Josh. Yeah, send me an email, jfrink, F-R-I-N-K, at basiccoatings.com, because we are lining up um, several demo days uh, at a couple different dist uh, distributors. I, I haven't posted up the flyer about it yet, but uh, we do have some demo days set. And just to clarify uh, on the question of pints, uh, we can take orders right now. Yep. If you're a distributor, reach out to us. We've got a new price list that just came available this week. We can shoot it to you and start getting your order processed. Uh, one more question just came in. Which finishes can be used over the stain, Josh? Uh, we haven't had any issues uh, with any of our finishes over the stain. Uh, everything seems to be working great. Oh, something else. Are there any are there any finishes to avoid? Not on the basic coatings line. <laughs> okay. Um, okay. We, so, we're not so we, we, you know, just, just to, just to save anybody and to save anybody uh, a problem. Uh, we, we, I, I like to share that, that we, uh, we do know that we have some compatibility problems with Loba finish in particular. Uh, I'm not sure if that holds true for Pullman as well, but I, I know that you get the, kind of a weird, you get yeah. a weird orange peel effect with, with some of the loba finish and, and, and would rather not have you discover that the hard way. Oh, and we need to mention our uh, promo too that we have going uh, for the rest of the year. So if you tag us on social media, uh, Instagram um, of jobs that you've used, basic coatings products on, give us some pictures and, and use the hashtag wood floor proud. Uh, we're doing two different giveaways every month. We're doing a sports giveaway, uh, $250 and we're doing a residential giveaway, $250. So there'll be 12 sports winners and 12 residential winners. Um, and then those 12 will have a chance to win um, a tape machine for the sports guys and the residential guys get a fest tool track saw. So get going on those social media posts and try to win some money and some really cool tools. Okay, uh, excellent. I, I think we've covered, uh, we've covered a lot of material in 20 minutes. Um, anybody who would like to call me or email me, my number is 603-362-2769. 603-362-2769 or ppits at basiccoatings.com and uh, Josh uh, has shared his, his contact information as well. Cool. Thank you guys for your time. All right. Thank you.